Hey everyone, welcome back to another tech tip and in today's video we're going to go into the settings of Mozilla Firefox and show you how to change your security and your privacy settings. Check it out. All right, everyone, we are back at the computer here. And to, just to let you know that this is a fresh installation of Firefox today for this demonstration. So any of the settings that we see under privacy and security are actually going to be the default. And then you can go through and you can customize it any way you want. So first things first, we're gonna to want to open up Firefox. And the, the, of course, these instructions are gonna be relatively on any one of the operating systems, as long as you have the most recent update of Firefox. These instructions will be exactly the same. The, the operating system, Windows 10, Windows 8, it doesn't matter. It'll be the same. So what we're going to do is, of course, open up Firefox. And you can either do that by down there at the taskbar or searching for it in your start menu. Or since this is a fresh installation, I've got an icon right here on the desktop. So I'm going to open that up. And you can see that it's not my default. I'm just going to go ahead and click Not Now since I don't need to worry about that. And then what we're going to do in the top right-hand corner you're gonna click on the three lines that are parallel to each other. Left click on that, and then come on down and left click on the option that says Options. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna load the next Options menu, and then on the left here, you can see the Privacy and Security. It's got the little padlock icon. Left click on that, and this is, this, this is gonna take us into the basics of the Privacy and Security settings for Mozilla Firefox. So as you can see, all of these that are checked or either the radio dial that are checked, they are all default. Uh, with the new installation, of course, you can go through and customize this, as I was saying. So forms and passwords, we're just going to go through these real quick. The cool thing about Firefox um, is that if you have a question or you kind of want to learn a little bit more, you can actually click on Learn More on the links next to these, and it will take you to their page where it will kind of give you a basically either a summary or it will give you a page of information to you, you can go through and read and understand uh, what these settings do, more or less. So uh, history, forms and uh, forms and passwords, pretty straightforward. Uh, Firefox will remember to uh, will remember your password. So if you wanted to do that, you leave these checks and as you log into these accounts, it'll say, do you want to remember this? You can click yes or no or remember or, uh, cancel, etc. cetera. Uh, autofill addresses. So as you're typing in, like uh, say you're ordering something off of Amazon and you're typing in something, your address for the order, it can actually automatically fill that in for later reference if you wanna just make it just a quick boom, boom, boom. Uh, order this, put that address in, done. I mean, now Amazon probably is a bad example because they usually remember your uh, your address anyway. But anyway, the autofill addresses is exactly that for different web pages as well. So it'll just remember your uh, address. So use a master password. If you want to set up a master password to get into the accounts, you can put that in here. As soon as you check that box, the change master password box will light up. You can click on that, punch in a master password. Uh, history, Firefox will remember history forever, never remember, use custom settings. So as of default, it's remember history as you browse, it'll just remember it. Um, or you can select never remember, so it never will uh, track your history or anything like that. And then of course, if you do have some history and you wanna clear it, you can just click on clear history here. Cookies and site data. As you browse uh, pages, you can see your stored cookies, site data and cache are currently using 3.2 megabytes of disk space. So as you browse these webs, uh, websites or things like that, it will download uh, small bits of data or information such as like pictures, it'll cache data or cache pictures, uh, cookies, etc. to make when you go back to that site, it'll make the loading quicker since it doesn't have to actually go out to the internet and pull that information again. So uh, those are normal to have. You can go through, clear those from time to time because as you browse the internet, they will slowly build up and build up. And if you don't have anywhere, if you have never cleared them, you probably have a um, couple hundred or maybe even a couple thousand megabytes worth of uh, disk space being used on cookies and site data. So you can go through and manage that, exceptions. Um, you can also kind of tailor them a little bit more. You can accept cookies and site data from websites. So until they expire, until uh, accept third-party cookies and site data. So some cookies and stuff like that, as you can see, they have expiration. So after a certain time frame, they'll just expire and go away. Um, or you can just go through block cookies and site data altogether. You don't have to worry about them. So. Uh, address bar is when you're using the address bar, you can use suggestions for browsing history, bookmarks, open tabs. So if you have a uh, browsing history that has something to do with that web page that you're going to, it will suggest that. If you have bookmarks, it may suggest that. And of course, if you have other open tabs for that same website, it will also uh, give you suggestions as well to go back to that one. So just a kind of a way, these are just, some of these are a way to kind of tailor uh, the user experience and make things a little bit more user friendly. Tracking protection, this is off uh, only in private windows. Tracking protection blocks online traffic that collects your browsing data across multiple websites. So as you visit websites, they will take information about your computer and then you'll notice if like on Facebook, 
you're going through Facebook and you'll see an ad for like a vacuum cleaner or something like that. And that's because you probably had recently, whether it's on a phone or something like that, if you're using like sync devices, it's using that information to say, oh, you looked at vacuums on this such and such day, here's an ad for it. So that's kind of how they go through and use, they're also called tracking cookies. Uh, you can have these always track, never, only in private windows. You can create exceptions and change block lists. So you can go through and click on learn more if you want to learn more about the tracking protection that Firefox has, which is pretty cool. Uh, send websites a do not track signal that you don't want to be tracked. Uh, so if you're using the tracking protection, when, you, when uh, you visit a website, it will send out that signal saying you don't want your information tracked um, only when you're using it or you can change it to always. So it's really just a... Honestly, most of these so far that we've gone through, leaving them default is just fine. There's nothing crazy about it. It's relatively normal. Uh, permissions, what this will do is if you go to like a, like a Skype page or you go to some kind of like a, a meeting page or something like that, you'll notice you may get a little pop-up that asks for permissions. If it wants to use your location or your camera or your microphone, it may ask if you want to get notifications for like Facebook. If you log into Facebook for the first time, on uh, on Firefox, it'll give you a little pop-up box, Chrome too, but uh, Firefox will give you a little pop-up box saying, do you want to enable notifications? You can click yes or no or block. Yes, of course, if somebody sends you a message, it'll pop up in like the little bottom right-hand corner of your uh, computer if you have Firefox open or uh, of your desktop. And then if you do no, of course it won't, and then you block, it'll just completely block it. So again, these are all relatively normal. Uh, pop up block window, uh, block pop up windows. That's of course if you're browsing sites and there's a bunch of pop ups or ad pop ups, Firefox will automatically go through and block those for you. So there's a, just a lot of data in here. Uh, Firefox data collection and use. It'll uh, allow Firefox to send technical interaction data to Mozilla. So they'll basically take uh, technical data about your computer if it's crashing or if there's things like that. They have kind of like a bug reporting uh, that'll go out and send them and say, hey, this crashed. Most of that stuff is done automatically. Security, deceptive content, and dangerous software protection. This is, of course, on by default. So if a website gets flagged for, again, a deceptive content or dangerous, Firefox is either going to A, block it completely, or B, notify you saying, hey, you shouldn't be here. You should probably turn back, and then it will give you the option to either continue forward or to go back. So, of course, uh, uh, Firefox is really good about doing that. Chrome as well. So if they have something that says it's a dangerous website, chances are it's probably a dangerous website. Unless you're setting up like a, like a website or you're setting up something, you may get that it's an unsafe website because it, it could be unsecured because your system administrator or something like that may have not gone through and secured the website or anything yet. So uh, certificates, these are just uh, certificates are basically little uh, certifications that set on your computer to verify that your computer is safe and basically send traffic, encrypted traffic back and forth and basically verify that your computer is um, is where it's supposed to be. So those are just basic settings. Like I said, you can go through, you can click on learn more if you want to learn a little bit more in depth on what some of these do. Um, otherwise, everything else is pretty much default and you can customize it any way that you want. Hey everyone, thanks for watching that tech tip. Hope you're able to learn something today with the adjustment of your privacy and your security settings of Mozilla Firefox. If you know someone that can use this video, share that to them, also give it a like. Leave any kind of comment or feedback in the comment section below the video. And of course, while you're down there, don't forget to hit the subscribe and we will see you next week.